And the brain is a closed container. This is the brain and this is the score, right? Everything is maintained tight. Any change in pressure is a problem. And whenever there's a change in pressure, the one that get into problem, look at it. The bone said, I'm not moving. The fluid will try to move, but the only person who is always nice is the brain. And then it start getting injured or any and fall off and come up. So intracranial pressure happen because what? We need to maintain certain pressure. CPV is equal to what? MAP minus ICP. That means in your brain, in order to ensure cerebral perfusion pressure, that means in your brain, okay? Brain pressure, the blood that goes there. We have to maintain your pressure enough, your map, okay? And then uh, when we subtract the intracranial pressure from it, we get a perfusion. This is what allow blood flow, okay? This is what allow blood flow to the cells and everything, and they use it. So if your ICP is too high, it start going up, what happened? Your CPP drop and you want to maintain 60 to 80. This is normal to ensure good blood flow to the brain. So sometimes what, what can we do to improve CPP? We drive the um, ICP up because your ICP is going, uh, no, the, C, the map up to compensate for increase. So when the ICP goes up, the map will try to go up to compensate for that so that we can maintain your uh, CPP to allow perfusion. It can go too high that we get into trouble. Okay. When we get into trouble, when the pressure of the, in the brain is too high, this is what happened. Okay. This is what happened. The brain is sits here like that. And your breathing center. So there's a breathing center here. So compensationally, your body will try to increase your blood pressure. So hypertension, right? But when it increases your pressure and the ICP continue to increase, what happens? Your brain, the breathing center get into trouble and you start having abnormal breathing. Change talk breathing that happen to people, right? Abnormal, irregular breathing. And all these affect your, your cerebrovascular system and your heart starts to slow down. So your heart rate goes down. And this is what is the Cushing syndrome or triad. Not the syndrome, Cushing triad, okay? This is what happened. So you have what? Hypertension, irregular breathing, and your heart rate go down, bradycardia. That is the definition. So the individual wanting to know ICP and the Cushing triad. This is all because your ICP is going up, it's affecting your map and uh, your cerebral perfusion system and your map goes up. That's why your blood pressure goes up in order to compensate everything. But then your breathing system, the too much pressure there, you start breathing abnormally and your heart rate start going down. And then these three form the Cushing triad. So if they give you a patient who has a brain injury, is hypertensive. So we have a patient who is brain injury at a severe uh, TBI, okay? And he has hypertension, okay? Bradycardia and irregular respiratory system. This is the Cushing triad. That's all, that's all what it is. So we got to figure out, and the brain, when you see this sign, the brain is about to hang it. The only way it can come is to come down and you fall off and push on your breathing system again and you stop breathing and you die. That is the uh, pathophysiology about that. Okay, remember they will trap you with shock. Okay, shock is different. When your heart rate goes down, so heart rate down, your body will try to compensate by increasing um, or 
when your blood pressure, yeah, when your blood pressure goes down, what will happen? Your heart rate goes up and your respiratory rate up. So this is different. So for, for shock, you have hypotension and tachycardia. This one, you have hypertension and bradycardia. That's the difference. So when you're choosing the answer choice, they will put something that look like shock in between, and then you have to figure it out, okay? The most important thing, what you do, the nurse, okay? So teaching, okay, that you provide to these patients when they are in the uh, hospital management, right? We want to be, maintain the, so remember when they have ICP is high, we causing brain injury, like the way I describe it. You, the nurse, you want to prevent secondary brain injury. So everything that you're doing is to prevent secondary brain injury. Make sure they're getting oxygen, okay? Make sure their blood pressure is okay. So you're maintaining a map that is okay to allow better CPP, perfusion, and we want to maintain it to 60 to 100 is fine. You don't want to go too much high, right? So that's what you're doing. So this patient will be on medication to increase their blood pressure uh, in order to compensate um, for everything, right? You don't want them to increase your ICP. So your idea is, I don't want to increase any more ICP. So what do you do? Okay, you don't want them to cough. So coughing is bad, right? Sneezing is bad. Okay, you don't need to suction them all the time. Okay, you want to suction them as needed. So PRN and as indicated. And the patient will tell you that they need to be suctioned. So don't go there every second you're suctioning them. So look at the answer choice. And then they say you suction them Q1 hour, Q2 hours. It's wrong answer. Basically, you're making them sick. The ICP is going, going to go up. Okay, you don't want them to vomit, right? You don't want them to have constipation. So there's things you can do for all these things I'm talking about, right? If you have to give them bar regimen, give them. Anti-medic, give them. Okay, don't let them do that. When they're doing that, you're causing a problem. And you have to less stimulation as much as possible. So the room should be quiet, you know, quiet room um, as much as possible. Um, less stimulation, dim the light off, you know, so that they, they don't get overstimulated. Okay, that's your idea. The head, okay, has to be midline and neutral, but it has to be up, okay, at least 30 degrees. So, head of the bed at 30 to 40 is enough. Why? Because you want to uh, basically allow the, the blood to drain down. Okay, that's be allow the drainage of blood. That's why people with autonomic and uh, dysreflexia is the same thing, it's an ICP issue. The first thing you do is to raise their head up and uh, it will decrease the ICP. You want to make sure they are PCO2. If they're on a ventilator, most of them, um, is close to 30 to 35, at least less than 35, you know? Because what, what is the problem? CO2 is a chronic and a good vasodilator. And so it allow a lot of blood to flow into the brain. We don't want that. So we want less blood and, and too much blood going into the brain by enough to uh, ensure CPP is okay. So that's, the things you do, and this is the most of the subtle questions they will ask you. So you have to be able to comfortably think about it without no memorizing and figure out why you have to do all these things. And it's very, very important. Okay, so those are the keys uh, um, about management. Guess what, if it's a kid, or uh, infant, they just um, different, they act different. So kids or infant. 
they act different. They will not be telling you, they don't talk. So they will be irritable, okay? So irritability in a kid is never a good thing, okay? And they will have high pitch cry. These are some of the signs that you should see and sunset highs. This is classic. So these are all buzzwords I'm giving you. This for ICP. So a kid with meningitis with increased ICP, they will be showing you these signs. It's a sign, I pitch cry, the sunset highs. Um, the won't be feeding will be poor, okay? Poor feeding um, and they will not eat. And if they, you can see their fontanelle, guess what? What are you going to think it will be? Okay, the, the fontanelles will be bulging. Classic ICP in a kid. So watch for that in case they give you a kid, you won't be seeing all these thing I'm talking about. Of course, since we're talking about ICP, then I usually try to be complete as much as possible. You got to know how to manage it medically. We did a lot of intervention, uh, so manage medically. What do you think? What, what can you give these patients to uh, improve their ICP? What do we have to do? You know the pathophysiology, just too much fluid there. So what do you think? Manitol, excellent. Then what? There's two medications that is very, very important. If they don't give you Manitol, they will give it to you. Dilantin is for seizure, uh, but we're talking about hypertonic saline, excellent. So we don't want to give them laces, it's a trap, okay? Don't give them diuretic, if you give them diuretic, it would drop their pressure. We don't want to drop their pressure. Um, so fluoresemide is a wrong answer. So don't pick that one, okay? The dilantin is a seizure medication. So it helps with seizure, that's good, but that will not decrease the ICP. ICP, medical management um, is mannitol and hypertonic saline. Usually we give them 3%, but five, they put by 5% 5 there, it's okay. You can pick it, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. You can pick that one and it's fine. Okay, but then if we mention Manitol, I'm a pharmacology guy, I love pharmacology. So it, it, it makes sense, you gotta think about it. This is sugar, okay? I try, the book will not say sugar, but it's basically high concentrated sugar is going to cause osmotic um, diuresis, is basically, that's the what you would do. It's going to pull a lot of fluid into the intravascular system. And look at what I'm, what I'm going to do. So what is going to happen? This is the vessel and this is the brain. All of a sudden I'm pulling a bunch of fluid into the intravascular system. What do you think complication is going to have? All of the sign in the body is seeing too much fluid. And when you have too much fluid, it's going to wet your heart. And who get into trouble? Your lungs. So number one side effect that you have to know, number one, somebody of Manitou is pulmonary edema. So you have to watch for that. So it does. That's normal one side effect. If they're going to ask you, this is the complication they will ask you, pulmonary edema. If I give you mannitol, I should be watching for crackles, okay? In your lungs, okay? Pink fruit of sputum, like all those things that you know that we get in complication from it. If they give you urine output is two liters, yes, because you give them mannitol. So these patients, you have fully. Don't worry that, oh, I give you mannitol and they pain like a, whatever you want to call it, like a flat gate. Yeah, that's what the monitor is doing. So don't be wor worried about it. What you should concern about is patient developing pulmonary edema, heart failure. Yeah, all of them um, is related, right? So heart failure um, and pulmonary edema. That is the most important, no urine output. And then we can also use 3%. 
um, they can develop, become hypernatremic, you know, those are the biggest side effects. But that's no, this, I don't know if they will ask you, um, this is very, uh, it, it can cause sclerosis of the vein. So we try to give it through central line, okay? But you can give it through peripheral line. It's okay, 3% is fine. You can give it three, uh, through peripheral line. Um, but just know if they ask you, I mean, uh, it's okay to give it to you, but the preferred method is through a central line. And this is the management of uh, ICP and what you should look for. Remember, if they put other option like stool softness, anti-emetic, is yeah, because we don't want them to cough. We don't want them to uh, be constipated. And to make it complete, guess what? If you have high surgery, okay, it's the same thing. Intraocular pressure, you want it to be uh, less than 20. It's the same thing. So if they trap you and say, somebody has a eye surgery, what do you do? You have to do the same thing. Prevent them from coughing, okay? No cough. Make sure they, they have good bowel regimen, okay? Right? Make sure you give the anti so that they don't vomit. Tell them not to bend at the waist. All of them is the same thing. So it's the same thing you've learned, you can use it. Somebody has retinal surgery, eye surgery, you teach them the same thing. You can do all these things. You can lift weight, you can do all those things just to help with you so that we don't have too much pressure in your eyes. It's the same thing of ICP. Intraocular pressure is the same as uh, ICP uh, technique. And this is... um. Everything, I mean, whoever asked that question wanted to know about ICP, Christian triad, and then um, I had this to management of the ICP and medical and um, indication, things they can ask you what you need to do. And the common question is, yeah, it just occurred to me. Somebody who had a brain injury uh, I say he's being monitored for ICP. All of a sudden, uh, it is having um, evidence of herniation. So you see, a blood pressure is very high. Okay, hypertension. You see bradycardia, and you see irregular breathing, and they are on the ventilator. What should you do? Number one, they are head is already have. What what do you think you should do? Hyperventilate, excellent. You 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 disconnect them from the vents and you hyperventilate them as soon as possible to bring their CO2 down. Otherwise, they will hang it. So that's the easy thing you can do. You don't have time to go get mannitol. You don't have time to go get hypertonic saline. If they're on a ventilator, hyperventilate them and that will prevent herniation. So that's the easiest thing you can do. Excellent answer um, to prevent the patient from herniating. 